Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week number five, I believe, of the of the ABL, the Amateur Battle League, and we are bringing Soy once again. Now, this is going to be a really interesting uh, setup that they have here. They have a dynamic shuffling system, which means that we don't really have a set schedule for the entire season. We're doing the season in chunks, and that uh, scheduling is going to be determined based on, on performance up to that point in the season. So we are going up against Soy once again, because we do have very similar records, um, but... I'll be honest, I, I think I should be, you know, 4-0 at this point, right? So, so week one, we did have to take a draw because I accidentally had leftovers on my Vicobo, which was, which broke item clause. And honestly, the, the Vicobo could have had no item and it wouldn't have made any type of difference at all, but I did break the rules. So, so that was a draw there. And, uh, last week, I 100% think that Ferrothorn should have gotten five KOs. It should have, um, clutched that match out if it wasn't for the timer, but we are back again. And we talked a lot after the, after that last match. And we had a lot that we were both kind of thinking through. It kind of made me think of how I wanted to kind of re approach a rematch here. And there's going, there's a lot that I'm kind of thinking through. So we will see. Uh, I'm going to try to take a screenshot. Where did it go? Okay, here we go. Okay, we do see the Lapras Meow Stick. Uh, I believe that is the exact same six, except the Pink Urchin is here this time. Um, instead of the Instead of the Toad, which is really, really interesting to me. Now, I did show Prankster uh, Sunny Day possibilities, but I don't have the Klefki this time at all. And I really kind of wanted to throw him off with my double. And yeah, I did hear him say that he doesn't really know what double does. And I kind of just wanted just to kind of have fun with this week to bring the double just to kind of prove that it can uh, do a whole heck of a lot. But I already have my plan, my leads planned out. I re I still think that he's going to stick with the same leads of that Meow Stick and that Lapras combination. I think it is very, very strong against my team. And it gave him the best options to win because it set up that Veil right away. And my 100%... Um, leads is going to be this because this is the only way that i 100 percent prevent fake out and actually in our last matchup he didn't even bring the thunder wave on the meow stick specifically because um i just had uh, a, a decent amount of options for it and he felt that, that the safeguard is more important than than any type of thunder wave because again specifically of my clefki being kind of an issue for him so I, what, I, what I wanted to do here was play into it, uh, and the only thing that could stop this, I, I had to figure out a way to prevent fake out from happening, which is the only way that I could stop um, being able to eject button out his his Lapras. But um, I did get a little bit afraid of the Thunder Wave, and we do see the exact same um, leads as before. Now, I'll be honest, I don't think he's going to see this coming. Also, I did outspeed him last time. Uh, with a no speed investment Santa Conda, I do have a little bit of speed investment this time, and actually, um, it kind of worked out a little bit because it is an, is it is going to be enough speed to be able to to be able to uh, outspeed Marshadow at plus two. So if I get two max hurricanes up, two uh, max airstreams up, then I will be able to outspeed a Marshadow. Um, which will put me in a really interesting position, but what I do think is going to happen here, uh, honestly, I am a little bit surprised to not see the Polytoad here, and I think he's really considering what, what to do here as well. Um, fake Out is completely off the table for him, and I don't think he brought the Thunder Wave, although the only thing that could be catastrophic to my plan right now, and honestly could just be an auto-lose, but again, this, this kind of rematch was kind of just me, um, bringing out, um... Some more Mimi sets, some more like spicy heat sets um, that I wanted to try out here. Um, I did consider a lot with Excel Gore as well. Excel, Go Excel Gore had a lot of possibilities available uh, that I thought were interesting, but I just thought that that the, that the Prankster Thunder Wave was a little bit too much of an issue for that to happen. But oh no, I have a demon. Oh no, that's uh, okay. I mean, I'm gonna. I guess we can talk about it, but um, I honestly just messed that one up. Uh, I, I didn't realize I was D-Max. Oh, never mind. No, I forgot. I also forgot in this league, it doesn't matter. Never mind. I completely forgot. It's, I'm, I'm not breaking the rules in this league. Now, he does go get the helping hand off, which is perfect. That is absolutely perfect for what I'm trying to do here, because I will be able to trick the eject button, and this is going to prevent, this is going to prevent both, um, both a, a Resonance, or Aurora Veil, and a Helping Hand hit, and it kind of took Meow Stick out of this, um, out of this entire equation here, but it will force him to switch out without even being able to move this Lapras, has been neutral, I'm amazed that that worked out for me, I'm amazed that that worked out for me, 
but honestly, um, so so Soy in a previous week has brought um, has accidentally brought a non GMAX Lapras, and it wasn't an issue for him. It, it, it it's not an issue in, the, in that type of league, but there are different leagues in which um, bringing D Max instead of GMAX has been an issue. In fact, I'm gonna try to delete my 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 um, message to him. But we completely nullified the GMAX. We completely um, took away the op the option of, of getting resonance up. Um, although it, it does kind of stink that I that I will be um, that I will be DMAX here. Now this is really interesting because I honestly expected him to want to bring in the Dracovish. I honestly expected him to want to bring in the Dracovish, but I don't know what I want to do here. I think. I don't even know. Is there like a switch that's worth making? Because I honestly just want to protect here. I honestly. Oh, I think he wants to surf here. I think that's what he wants to do. I think he wants to surf here. So with that in mind, I think I can do this. And I can quake into this. I think that works out well enough. Um. I don't know what would. I mean, he's he's not gonna go for fake out. Um, I guess he would go for the rising voltage here. But I surf is probably more more likely here. Ben Affleck. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I yeah, i I pretty aggressively think that a surf is coming out here. Um because it deals just the most damage across my, my team here. Um and it's going to double double this right you speed. But uh, this Santa Conda is going to be bulky enough, and with the weakness policy, um, with the weakness policy and the sandstorm, I mean, hopefully a plus two, a plus two max quake can get can make things happen here, um, because that's going to be a lot of his offensive pressure kind of out here. Although to be fair, I mean, he still has a heckin' Marsh Shadow and a heckin' uh, and a heckin' um. Dracovish in the back. But, um... I don't feel the worst about this, right? There are definitely some things that I kind of have to manage here. But the fact that I have my... I mean, the fact that that, that I have my my Ferrothorn out here and he's not behind a, a, a Veil this time means that I have a much better matchup against the Marsh Shadow. And uh, the Dracovish is kind of in an awkward position here because I am a plus two and... Um... He doesn't necessarily know how fast I am right now. So, again, yeah, I'm in a very interesting position. Uh, but that will be the Dracovish. So, what I want to do here, I want to make, I want to make a somewhat risky play here. No, maybe I shouldn't do that. Actually, I think I will. No, no, I no, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But what I do want to do. Is power whip this thing and I mean probably max guard right max guard just feels optimal here but getting a whole bunch of damage off yeah mm, yeah this is too tempting this damage is too tempting this damage is too tempting we do take it just barely but this is plus two damage here and that is no that's not a straight KO does he does he hang on i mean if he we're a plus two special defense on my ferrothorn which is huge for my ferrothorn does get a thunder wave off on this thing which i think is going to be fine but uh the bigger deal is that i want to really land this power whip we do land the power whip so that's going to be a ko for ferrothorn uh right away so right off the bat we are still in a really interesting position here we're still in a very interesting position here. I probably should have max guarded. I probably should have max guarded. Maybe, mm, I don't know. Maybe max guarding would have been better for me. Although, I don't know. When when I took that much damage from the Fish's Friend, I mean, obviously that had to be somewhat of a damage roll, so I probably might have just gotten lucky there, and that um, might have just been unfortunate for uh, on my part to get that lucky, but it's also a very, very defensive... A very defensive... Um, A very defensive uh, thing. You guys know what I mean. But now, I can, I can gyro ball this thing, and I can. 
I mean, I probably want to glare into it, right? I probably want to glare into it, right? Yeah, I mean, if, if it gives me the opportunity to do that, then I will. Yeah, I think that's optimal. I think that's optimal here. Uh, it's tough to say what is optimal because I, I, I don't think... I don't think that... Um, that... Um, Zen Headbutt, just, just a raw Zen Headbutt, picks up this KO when I need it to. But I think it's going to... Oh, he takes my... He takes my boost. So that's unfortunate. But... Um, I'm at least going to... Actually, I think that puts my, my Ferrothorn in a really good position here. I think that puts my Ferrothorn in a really good position because I'm going to get a lot of damage off on this Marshadow. And... And I don't think this Marshadow ever KOs me because of... Because of my Toppleberry. So how do I play this? I also have to remember that the Marshadow has a speed boost here. I think I'll just go into this thing and protect Gyro Ball. Right? I, I feel like that's optimal here. Um, because a, a, a Shadow Sneak is obvious, but I don't feel like there's a whole lot that I do about that? Question mark? And, I don't know. He also knows my item. He knows that, that I took the weakness policy off of the... That I just y yoinked it. There's a protect. I mean... I'd be surprised if I just don't just see the Shadow Sneak. Goes for the Fake Out. Yeah, I guess that's fair. That's totally fair. But, uh, it does, I don't think that it matters a little bit a lot. Because, yeah, he can he can obviously Shadow Sneak. But, I think the best way that I protect myself against that... Um, I, I think I just go out into... I think I just go out into... My Hydreigon on this Chandelure slot. Because he's never going to close combat into this slot. And it frees up my... It frees up my my chandelure to just switch out and and take the take the attack with my now if he makes the call and literally clicks well i guess force palm because um force palm is technician boosted and, and that is the move that he opted for um in our last round but yeah i'd be just very surprised if he goes for a fighting move into my chandelure slot um which i think makes the hydragon switch safe here but i'm not entirely sure not entirely sure. Uh, it's funny because the the the, the Hydreigon is primarily here because I thought that I would 100% just lose to the. Uh, oh, is that a what? Okay, I mean that is that, that's that's awesome. I I I like that a lot, but um, but it's gonna yeah I don't know it's just gonna, overall gonna, just gonna be a lot of chip damage. Uh, that will eat up my Chapel Berry though, which is unfortunate. But uh, the Marshadow's down. The Dracovish is down. Uh, and that is a lot of his offensive pressure kind of out of the way here. Um, now, I don't think that the Meowstic... Um, I mean, the, the, the Meowstic can power a punch, I guess, into my... Into my... Into my Ferrothorn, like, forever. But, uh, I don't see any wrong with just lead seating here and you turning the heck out of here or i could just try to get a really strong attack in mm. no i think an ice move just makes so much sense to me here um hmm. i probably well I, I probably try to take this where what whenever i can there's a rain dance which is interesting that's, that's definitely interesting but um I think I'm always going to be in a position where I can kind of. I, I think I think I'm always going to be in a good position here. Um, that's what I'm going for. He's going to definitely go for an ice move into this slot. So I don't know. I mean, I mean again, he, he could he could water move, uh, expecting me to 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 do this again, but I doubt it. And there's a lead seed. Wait, why did I move first? Wait, did, does Lapras get trick room? Or, oh, it's Avalanche. Oh, that's funny. That's so funny. That's actually really funny. But, uh, for right now... For right now, I think I'm gonna try to not make the same mistakes as last time that this matchup was played. So, I'm gonna Power Whip, and I'm gonna protect this slot here. 
And um, if we can get this Lapras out of the way, then I don't think that there's a way that I really particularly lose this one. I think um, I think I put myself in the best position possible. Um, and again, I mean, a lot of it just goes goes out to that um, to that awkward kind of Dracovish roll. That helping hand is interesting. It really, I don't know, I don't know what he's trying to do here, but. I have to. I, I had to protect the the, the Chandelure slot. Goes for, yeah, goes for liquidation in, in that slot, into that slot. That's fine. And I get fully paralyzed. Okay, that is uh, awkward. That makes things awkward. Because now I think he's gonna want to kind of try to predict what I want to do here, and I really don't want to be in that kind of position of. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is just something that I do here. I really... Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't... I don't want to over-predict, but I also don't want to under-predict here, right? So, I want to figure out how to do this. And I know that Fairthorn can take it out if I just don't get fully paralyzed again. There's a liquidation. Um. Oh, and this actually helps me out a, a lot because I, because I am a really defensive double here. But yeah, now now Ferrothorn's just getting the KOs, and now I don't think they're... I, I think it's going to be very difficult for, for me to kind of um, lose it from this position here. Um, but yeah, just a lot of ki a, a lot of small things went my way. Definitely, definitely the kind of um, Meowstic set not having Thunder Wave. Um, definitely... Definitely um, a lot of the choices, right? So... One thing that still kind of baffles me a little bit is is not is him not, um, I guess, believing in in how good his um his uh Marowak is against me. I think his Marowak is phenomenal against me. His Marowak is phenomenal against me. I think th I think this is gonna be a, a rising voltage, but um. I'd be surprised if this ever really gets past my my Ferrothorn. I mean, this could pick up a, a KO, definitely, onto, onto that. Yeah, so, unfortunately, that is going to take a point of, of differential away from me. That's obviously bad. But I think I can honestly just decide what, what I want to give this final KO. To whom I want to give this final KO. Nah, I think Eternatus here. I think Eternatus kind of deserves it. But, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. overall, this was just kind of a strong match here for me. I think uh, getting that strong turn one off, and I, I prepared a lot for the contingencies, right? So I thought that if I got that playoff turn one, then for sure, for sure, he would go for... He would try to bring in the Dracovish, and that's exactly how I positioned my... my my Chandelure plus that um, speed boost because what I wanted to do, right? So, sh so Chandelure now outspeeds a Scarf Dracovish because of that speed boost, and because of that, I can I can first of all act first and, and negate the 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 Ficious Ren boost. I can Will O Wisp it, and then and then um go from there. But yeah, I mean, things just went very differently from what I thought. That was a really, really fun match. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more recent ABL. This has been a lot of fun. Like I said, I really kind of wanted to build this for a more kind of meme kind of set. I really did want to show things off like the double and that uh, eject button tech. I really wanted that to, to work out. But again, the, I think the only reason why the differential is as high as it is is because I got really lucky with that Dracovish role and a few just team building decisions on both of our parts. Um, I, I know I know I played a lot of head games with kind of how I really thought about building this um and how I thought that's what I would build um but yeah I mean that's gonna be week week five I like I said kind of as, as far as I'm concerned this has been a really super solid season I think we should be five and oh um if not for a few really interesting things here but uh it's been a fun season I really want to uh keep making this happen but with that once again thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be once again out